I was a year ago today. I was here in Denver, September 30th. Last year, I had a stroke. So the fact that I'm standing here before you ain't nothing but God, y'all. Really. Now that I look back on it, I was kind of not feeling well leading up to Denver. And I was talking to one of my buddies on the phone, and he was telling me about a, a friend of ours that had had a stroke. And as he was telling me her story, I was like, yo, I feel like that now. And so he was like, dude, you need to go get your blood pressure checked, like right now. I was 221 over 140, and I felt like I was in trouble. You know, I was like, yo, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not good. But this is why the story gets really stupid. <laughs> so I still go to the club and do two shows that night. Mr. Perry, please go to sleep. He was having a hard time holding the microphone. And that's when I really got alarmed. And uh, he was also alarmed, too. He knew he wasn't functioning properly. I did the two shows, and, I, and my brother, who lives in Denver, and he was feature act for me that night, he took me to the uh, VA. They brought me in. I thought they would lower my pressure and I would go home, to be honest. I basically had the stroke at the hospital. He, he stayed and didn't walk again until he was able to be trained to. That was a, uh, it's a culmination of life. I say that because there is nothing I can question anymore. I saw him. There were moments where I thought, well, I, well, I'll never stand again. When you can't use your left hand, you don't, you don't even think about the fact that you can't take care of yourself. He's an animated performer, riding a dive across the stage and everything in a full suit. And, and I've watched him do that. So to watch him walk in and not be able to walk, and moreover than that, not know you don't know how to walk yet. And the next thing I heard was like, yeah, he's in the hospital. He's at the VA. And I was like, good. And in my mind, I was like, I really hope that they keep him and they get him right because I know he'll be like, I got to go. I got these shows to do. Yeah, you give yourself a hug. Cross your chest. Yeah. When he came in, he definitely had deficits in multiple areas as far as uh, after his stroke. So not only did it affect his physical, it also affected a little bit of his ability to process information that he was receiving. So their questions were, was, is he going to get back to work? And I'll be honest, our initial presentation, I was not sure that he was going to get back to work. Well, no, I'm in rehab. It's, it's speech therapy, it's, it's physical therapy, it's occupational therapy. You're in a hospital, you have a wheelchair, you can't walk, and you're a stand-up comedian. You're a stand-up comedian. You need to stand. That's kind of part of the job. Keep using that left hand as much as you can. Okay? This is the secret. That's the secret. You got it. It actually works, but you just got to tell it to do something. It does. And one thing that, as I communicate to them, is I need to be able to stand on stage. She's like, well, why don't we make that a part of your therapy? Take your time. Think out what you're doing. Yep, take your time. His biggest goal, of course, was being able to get back on stage and and be able to do it halfway decently. When we first started with them, it was just working on standing and then stepping in the parallel bars. We YouTube videos of his prior performances to see how he used to do his performances on stage. That way we knew functionally what we had to get him ready for. Okay, let's do two more laps before you take a rest if you can. Take your time. A lot of what he does is quick, rapid action on his feet and being able to analyze an audience and determine whether he's going down the right road or not or if he needs to switch gears. You know how. Down to earth. Down to earth. There's so many human beings that are part of this process. You're the, table. the lady that was so patient, and she said, just, just grab the salt shaker and put it on top. I, and it was so hard. It was so hard. I didn't think, I didn't think I was going to be able to do it again. Just, you know, it was moments when I was like, yo, I can't do this. I wanted to give up, but I, I couldn't. With Rodney, it was pretty unique because stand-up comedy, there are no tools that we could give him to work other than standing in front of us and, and telling his jokes and, and performing. So that was what we did. I can't wait to get on that stage. I mean, got some stuff, some hospital jokes, got some new stroke material. I'm gonna be the stroke comic.
This was the big test for me. Everyone was like, oh, he's walking around and, you know, he's able to communicate and everything. I know him. So this is a big test to watch him get excited about it, you know. (laughs) He put his hat on and everything. And those are things that let me know Rodney's back. (laughs) How do you not tell a guy like Rodney Ray, you are not going to make a show on the 18th? I was not sure if I could conquer that. And so to have that show in the conference room. I I couldn't walk kind of gave me a light. Once he got those laughs, I'm back. And I'm never going to let anything take that away from me again. Do That's what I felt from Rodney that day. Right. I was, I, was, I was reasonably funny. And scale of 1 to 10, I might have been a, you know, a stroke 10, but a regular maybe 4 or 5. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you something. You do not respect medical people to your ass in the To stand on stage and tell people, about my stroke and about what I went through is, is maybe the realest piece of comedy that I've done in, in over a decade. A team in the hospital, thirsty as hell, and needs some ice chips. Yo, it's your boy Roddy Perry. About to head home. Had a stroke one month ago. The people that were at the VA that not only helped me, <laughs> but helped me in such a way where they allowed me to keep my dignity. That's the most powerful part for me.